that's the, ver the verdict of the court, is that there is a finding of guilty on all of the counts set forth in the indictment. Uh, the court anticipates there will be a conviction of three counts, one, four, and I believe 11, and one gun specification. Now, that being said, it's my firm belief as a human being and not as a jurist that Daniel does de suffer from a serious defect of the mind. This court's opinion is that we don't know enough about these video games. I think I knew enough to know that they were not good. Uh, if used improperly in recreation. And in this particular case, not so much the violence of the game, because I believe in the Halo 3, what it amounts to is uh, a contest to see who can shoot the most aliens who attack. It's my firm belief that after a while, the same physiological responses occur that occur in the ingestion of some drugs. My opinion would be that most of the activity that is required for success in these games takes place in the limbic system of the brain where the issue is to act or not react and to do it accurately. And I believe that the reward or stimulus that this provides is sufficient uh, to cause the release of large amounts of dopamine. The same as would be released if someone were to ingest cocaine or any drug with amphetamine properties. Otherwise, you couldn't play 10, 12, 15, 18 hours at a time. My firm belief is that these physiological changes that are caused by the game itself also cause changes organically in the brain. I believe that uh, just as though depression and anxiety and agitation can cause physiological changes in the brain. I believe that an addiction to these games can do the same thing. The dopamine surge, the stimulation of the nucleus accumbens, the same as an addiction, such that when you stop, your brain won't stand for it just as it won't stand for it if you decide you're going to quit heroin or crack cocaine. The other dangerous thing about these games, in my opinion, is that when these changes occur, they occur in an environment that is delusional. Because you can shoot these aliens, and they're there again the next day. You have to shoot them again. And I firmly believe that Daniel Petrick had no idea at the time he hatched this plot that if he killed his parents, they would be dead forever. I think that is the state of mind that this young man was in at the time of these offenses. That death would not be permanent but that the addiction to this game was so strong that his parents' temporary death would would turn on a light for them so that they could see just how serious he was. Now, I also firmly believe that if we did a study of these games and the children that play them and the children that suffer these devastating effects, I believe if we studied, we employed 
modern technology, if we were to PET scan, use photon emission tomography to study the brain and what it looks like and which areas are activated when these games are played. I think if we watch to see if there are any physiological changes as we see in depression with a shrinking of the brain and the brain stem, I think there will come a point when this will be a valid defense, but we're not there yet. And uh, I think the challenge is to all of us in this room to find out what these devastating effects are. Not long ago, uh, I sat with two other judges on a, a felony a felony murder case, and when we finished the trial, found this young man, I believe he was 19 at the time he shot his victim, and the judges and I talked about it. This was an inner city kid. This was a kid that uh, had a big chance, but he would have had to look hard to find it. And the judges and I spoke and we said, you know, how much of this young man's criminal activity are we responsible for? Because Hillary Clinton said something one time that I happen to agree with. One of the few things. She said that it takes a community or a village to raise a child. And I believe that. And I believe that when these types of tragedies occur, both for the Petrick family and in that case for the Nieves family, it's incumbent upon us all to say, we knew what was going on in the inner city. We knew that you weren't safe at night. We knew that children were carrying firearms to commit robberies when my guess would be that oftentimes these offenses are committed by inner city kids who carry guns all the time and have never shot one. We all know this is going on. We all know of these problems that video games can have caused. And we haven't done anything about it because it was the Nieves family, not mine. It's the Petrick family, not mine. But unless we start to learn from some of these societal mistakes, we're going to repeat them. And I believe this is true. Drugs, sex offenders, and people who commit homicide. That's my view, that this is a project for our own safety and self-protection, that uh, this is a project we must all embrace. I believe in the, in the not too distant future when more attention is paid to us as citizens, individuals, uh, we can learn some valuable lessons, prevent future tragedies, and uh, at the same time mollify some of those tragedies that we've already experienced. The uh, following the law, and I'm saying this to the Petrick family, is not easy. I'm not, I'm not pro-choice. I'm pro-life. But you know what? 
Roe versus Wade has been on the book since before I went to law school. And regardless of who you elect, that's not going to change. And if the issue of that law comes before me, I'm either going to do what I said I would do, or you're going to have a government of men. But I believe there's hope here. I believe that uh, it will start here, and uh, at some point when all is known about Daniel and what occurred here, we will be able to achieve a greater sense of justice. I've said over and over, this, as far as I'm concerned, this is a new country now. A country where those in charge and those who voted actually care about the Nieveses and the Petricks and want to recapture <coughs> all of these folks that our society has lost through our own fault. So given that the court is entering a, a finding of guilty on all counts, I will ask the state at the time of sentencing to elect. The anticipation is that there will be an election on counts one and four. Count 11 stands by itself with one gun specification. Because I don't want this issue to come to a conclusion here, I'm going to order a pre-sentence investigation and report, and as with that report, I'm going to be order, ordering uh, a test or two that might still be relevant. It won't be relevant at this juncture to Daniel's innocence or guilt, but it may lay the foundation for further inquiry. So given that, uh, uh, there are those guilty findings, and uh, Daniel is referred to the Lorain County Adult Parole Authority for a pre-sentence investigation and report. When that's complete, I will notify counsel and will appear again for sentencing. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. All right.